Hello everybody, this is Eric Navas. In this video, I'm going to be reading an audio book, audio letter of the Columbus UBF newspaper article. Columbus UBF man says he was deceived into joining religious cults. So let me look, give a little bit of context before I start reading this. So, so the Columbus UBF, that is operation to this day, is led by Henry Hank Park. But... But that was like, I guess, the reboot of the original Columbus UBF. This article about to read right now is was about was about the original Columbus UBF that was made back in the late 1970s and got disbanded in 1980s. It's made by Peter M. Chang, a former UBF missionary who is now a minister. At a Presbyterian um, seminary school, I believe. But I'll talk about that more in another video about the history of that. So, anyway, we'll get right into the video. Columbus UBF. Man says he was deceived into joining a religious cult. So, that's the title, right? The New York Advocate. So, that's the newspaper. In New York, Ohio. Sunday, November 18, 1990. Columbus, Ohio. John Wick was. In his early 20s when he when his religious background attracted the interest of a bible-based group he was flattered by the intention and honored when leaders asked him to shepherd his own flock now he believes he was deceived into joining a cult they gave me the impression that the background that i had fit right into where they were trying to go wick said of the group he met on the ohio state university campus a very clever way of recruiting somebody is to make them feel like they could become a valuable part of their organization the organization in this case was the University of Bible Fellowship, an international Bible study group which, with branches in Argentina, France, Guatemala, Libya, Saudi Arabia, Canada, West Germany, and Switzerland. The Cults Awareness Network, a Chicago-based organization, based organization set up to alert the public to the Sorry, tongue twisted. To the effects of mind control, says the University Bible Fellowship is a cult. While the word itself con conjures images of dads, humans engaged in, in ritualistic killings or mass suicides, researchers argue that most cults are nonviolent. Experts say that their danger lies mainly in mind control techniques used to emotionally paralyze cult members. Most of them are squeaky clean, said. Dr. Saul Levine, author of a book on cult and a professor of psychiatry at the University of Toronto. There is no drugs, no sex, and no violence for the most part. But, Levine explained, it's a tragedy because a lot of talented, wonderful young people just fall by the wayside. They come out of the other world and the world has lost their particular talent. Wick was 22 at the time he joined the University Bible Fellowship. Within three months, he was a group leader, but his rise was temporary. During his four and a half years in the group, Wick said his self-esteem was shattered. They don't differentiate between pride and self-esteem, he said. Any positive feelings a person has about himself, they label as pride. And which is, which is true to this day, by the way. Wick, now of new work, said he began to isolate himself from his family and friends. He said the group convinced him that all his needs could be met only by other group members. Wick said the group exerted further control and making him feel guilty about past relationships with women. Sometimes when I dated in college, it was nothing more than going to church on Sunday morning and then talking to her to the dining hall for lunch in the afternoon and a walk in the park that evening. But the fact that I dated a lot of girls, I was made to feel like a womanizer, almost like a male prostitute, somebody who's really bad in a sense. Yeah, so um, I'll put a link in the description of a playlist about UBS marriage of faith. I want to be able to talk about the no dating policy and how they arrange marriages. Wick became disillusioned when he discovered discrepancies between the group's teaching and actual practices. He said his father, a retired Christian missionary, was instrumental in helping see the group did not share his religious philosophy at all. Jerry King, a leader of the Columbus chapter of the University of Bell Fellowship, denies the group as a cult, but he admits members must relinquish themselves to the group. The basic idea is that the answer to what students need and are looking for, whether they know it or not, lies in the fact they are created beings by God, King said. 
they're not just free willy and independent we were made by someone and therefore my life is just not mine to do what i want cynthia kisser of the cult awareness network said cults often use deceptive and fraudulent techniques to enlist members her organization defines a destructive cult as a cl closed system or group that deceptively recruits members and retains them through manipulative mind control and that's the end of the video it's a little short but it's really important that this be out there right until next time.